Hello and welcome to another Daily Dose of English. As you may already know, I'm a writer as well as an English teacher. I pen articles, short stories and books. But I don't use a pen anymore. I use a keyboard. Nevertheless, I can still say that I pen the things I write. I wonder how many more works Shakespeare might have penned if he'd had a computer instead of a quill. A quill is a pen made from the flight feather of a bird. The flight feathers are the big feathers that form the trailing edge of a bird's wing. The word pen comes from the Middle English, pen, which means feather. The lower part of the feather, or pen, was cut into a nib which was dipped in ink. The ink-filled nib could then be used to write with. Interestingly, a female swan is called a pen, and I'm not sure if there's any connection. A male is called a cob. It's amazing to think that Shakespeare wrote all of his marvellous works using a feather and ink. Nowadays there are many types of pen, though the ballpoint pen is the most common. This type of pen is cheap and reliable. It rolls ink onto the paper using a small ball at the end of a reservoir of ink. You can also have a fountain pen. This type also uses ink held in a reservoir inside the pen. The reservoir is either a cartridge, which is disposable, or it can be filled from a bottle of ink. The ballpoint pen is designed to be cheap and disposable. The fountain pen can be refilled many times and can be very expensive. Fountain pens have metal nibs. Copper nibs were known to have been used in Pompeii around mm, in the first century AD. But metal nibs didn't become commonly used in pens until around 1822. The first fountain pen was invented by a Romanian, Parach Ponaru, in 1827. I don't speak Romanian, so I probably mispronounced the name. The ballpoint pen was invented by a Hungarian, Laszlo Biro, in 1938. I don't speak Hungarian any more than I speak Romanian, but I think I pronounced Biro correctly because we still call cheap plastic ballpoint pens Biros. So writers can pen works on a computer without even going near a pen. This makes me wonder if we'll still be using pens in the future. Perhaps the pen's days are numbered and the only place you'll be able to find them is in a museum. I hope you enjoyed this Daily Dose of English and I'll see you again tomorrow for another one. Goodbye for now.